So in today's video, we're going to take a look at ESDE's built-in utilities. And these, all these tools essentially allow you to manage your library very quickly from inside ESDE. So we're going to walk through each one and then tell you how each one works. Let's get started. So the first utility we're going to focus on is Rescan ROM Directory. Now imagine the use case here where I have Sega Genesis, and I have Sonic the Hedgehog and Sonic the Hedgehog 2. And I want to add Sonic the Hedgehog 3. So first thing I'll do is add that to my ROMs folder here. Now you can see I have it there. And obviously it doesn't show up in ECE yet, but this is where Rescan ROM Directory comes into play. So I'll open up the menu, go to Utilities, and then Rescan. It's gonna give me a little message here and I'm just gonna click Proceed. And now if I go back to Sega Genesis and then scroll down, you should see that I have now Sonic the Hedgehog 3. So this is a really quick way to basically update ESD with games you've added without having to close it first. Next, let's look at create and update system directories. Now this utility will essentially create all the folders that ESD expects for ROMs in the default ROMs folder that you've set up. So in this case, because I have a curated list of games here, I have only the specific folders I want. But if I wanted to add the full set, what I would do is click here, and then this will give you a message that's basically telling you what it's going to do. It's going to basically add all the system directories that ESD supports, as well as add a system.info.txt file in each of those directories that essentially indicates the types of uh, ROMs and file types that are supported for each system. Now, as it says here, it's a safe operation, so it won't delete or modify existing folders. It'll simply just add new folders. So if I click Proceed here, and it says it's created, and if I go back to my ROMs list view here, you can see now I have the full list of folders for all the systems that ESD supports. And then in each one, like Amiga, if I open up systeminfo.txt, it basically gives me a really clean set of information around what file types it supports, as well as the launch commands for each one as well. That's a really simple way for you to identify what a given system supports without having to go to the documentation. Hope that makes sense. So the final utility we're going to walk through is Orphan Data Cleanup. And this is a good utility to use if you've, let's say, bulk deleted a bunch of games from your library and you want to clean up the game list XMLs as well as the media files you've downloaded in one shot. So before we do that, I'm going to get something set up first. Let's give Sonic the Hedgehog 3 some metadata. So I'm going to scrape this. And scraping this will basically give me images and metadata to play with so I could show you how this works. And if you remember our video on scraping, what this is essentially doing right now is it's downloading artwork and metadata from Screen Scraper to store against this game. So if I click Sonic the Hedgehog 3, and it's going to download in the background basically images and things. So let me save that. <clears throat> and now I have artwork and metadata for Sonic the Hedgehog 3. So before I get into Orphan Data Cleanup, let me show you the way we'd recommend to remove games from your library first. So if you click on Edit This Game's Metadata, and then scroll down to Delete, doing this will, if you wanted to say remove Sonic the Hedgehog 3 from your library fully, this is the cleanest way to do it in one shot. This will remove the game, the media files, and the entry for it in the game list for Sega Genesis. I'm not going to do that right now, though, because I want to show you um, the bulk way. The next option is if you just want to delete the media files for a given game, you can click Clear. And Clear essentially will remove the entry from the game list XML for Sega Genesis, as well as the media files for Sonic the Hedgehog as well. But again, I want to show you the bulk delete. So let's click No here, and then go back. So if I open up Utilities, this is where Orphan Data Cleanup comes into play. So let's first, before we get there, let's delete Sonic the Hedgehog 3 from our file system. So what I'm doing here basically is I've gone and deleted it directly from the file system. But because I've done that, the entry for it is still in the game list, and the media files for it are still in the file system as well. And this is where Orphan Data Cleanup comes into play. So if I click on that, you see you have three options at the bottom, media, game list, and collections. And they essentially do what they say. Media is going to delete all the images and videos for games you've manually deleted from your library. 
GameList is going to manually clean up all the GameList XML files and remove entries for games removed from the library as well. And then Collections, it's going to essentially do the same thing. So let's go through each one by one. So if I run media here, you're going to see, whoops, one second before I do that. Actually, what I needed to do, because I deleted Sonic the Hedgehog, I actually have to go back to the first part of this video. <laughs> Let me rescan ROM directory here. Okay. Now if I go back to Sega Genesis, you'll see that Sonic the Hedgehog is not here in the UI anymore. But as I said before, the media files are still in place and the gameless entry is still there. So now if I go into utilities and then orphan data cleanup and run media, you're going to see it remove about 10 items or so. There it is. And those 10 items refer to the 10 media files that Sonic the Hedgehog 3 had stored on the file system. Now if I run game lists, you're going to see one entry here. And essentially that is the removing of Sonic the Hedgehog 3 from the Genesis game list XML. So it basically created a new Genesis uh, XML without Sonic the Hedgehog 3. And collections, because I didn't add Sonic the Hedgehog to a collection, it's not going to do anything. But what this would do, let's say I had Sonic the Hedgehog to a platformers collection. Um, and I ran this, it would then clean up that platformers collection and remove Sonic the Hedgehog 3 from that as well. So let's go and see what it did on the file system. Let's look at our downloaded media. And you can see here's a folder here now called cleanup. And in that there's a dated folder and in that Genesis. And then you can see these are all the media files for Sonic the Hedgehog 3 that were removed. And because I wanted to do this, I could simply just delete this folder and we're good to go. Again, this is gonna be the same. If I open up the cleanup folder here, Again, it's dated, and you're gonna see a Genesis folder, and then in that, there's a gameless.xml. Now this is the full gameless.xml for Sega Genesis with Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Because I don't want that anymore, I could simply just delete it. And what this did do behind the scenes is it generated a new gameless.xml file without Sonic the Hedgehog 3. So the cleanup process is really nice and easy. It essentially allows you to do it all in one shot without having to do it by hand. So yeah, that's the utilities that are built into ESDE for managing your library, essentially, and your files. Um, hope that made sense, and thanks so much for checking us out. Take care.